Okay, so let's have a lesson on this um, very famous piece by Torega. Um, now, I have this lesson available as a single selection on the site, but this lesson is specifically for my grade four repertoire lessons book. In the book, there's a couple of pages of lesson material to prepare you for the piece. And so this lesson is more connected to that book, but there's links for under the video for the book or the individual selection. So whichever you, you choose is just fine. If you already have the piece in a book though, you can follow along with the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips as well. So we're gonna do a couple of different things. We're gonna do some fretboard review today. Um, just kind of reviewing some of the notes on the fretboard so that gives you a little reminder before we start talking about playing those notes up there. We're gonna play the melody. I'm using the same fingerings from the piece, so that's going to be very important. Like learning to bring out that beautiful melody because this piece, although it's a little bit difficult in a couple of small sections, it's really all melody. If you can play the melody nicely and beautifully, then um, you have nothing to worry about. All the difficult sections fade away and you just bring out that beautiful melody. And then we're going to talk about the trickiest part of the piece, which is that that little upper position part that gives students um, a little bit of, of trouble. So we're going to cover a couple of ways of how to practice that to make it easier. I've taught this piece a lot. And I think by going over the different ways that I'm going to show you how to practice the piece, you'll definitely be able to accomplish it. Especially if you've gone through my other materials, all the book, all the um, grade levels up to this point. But this is such a famous piece, like professionals play this in concert all the time. It's such a well-known professional piece, so congratulations on reaching this level. But we'll have to do a little prep to get there. So, let's start by just reviewing some notes on the fretboard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play an E major scale and an E natural minor scale. This piece is in a major key to begin with, but then the second half of the piece is in a minor key. So we're just going to review some upper position notes in ninth position. So this is E major in ninth position, starting on the third string. So one really good idea is when you're reviewing the fretboard, say the note names out loud. That way when you see the notes later, you'll have a good strong connection to what the actual note name is. So it's E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, D sharp, C sharp, B, A, G sharp, F sharp, E. And then let's do a natural minor scale to prepare us for the second half of the piece. This is also in ninth position, but we'll be changing to tenth position after a bar. So E, F sharp, G with our fourth finger. And then we're going to squeeze our first finger in to A, B, C, D, E, D, C, B, A. Squeeze our fourth finger into G, G, F sharp, E. To get very comfortable with that. Now let's play the melody. So the melody primarily takes place on the first string but there's a couple of other places and I've written the melody out on its own with a lot of string numbers to help you out. Um, you really want to make sure before tackling the piece with all the other notes that are going to be involved in chord shapes that you know where that melody is. It'll keep you grounded, it'll keep the reading more simple, it'll just orient you a lot to what's important. And of course, you, you want to work on phrasing and things like that. So G sharp. So it's all fourth finger, all first string. And you know, you want to ease into the phrase and grow and then relax. Ease in, grow. A little bit of vibrato is nice. And then most importantly in this section, you, you just want to know the melody of this section. So again, that second line there, E, D sharp, C sharp, B, E, F sharp, A, G, that E, F sharp, 11th fret, 10th fret, 9th fret, 
down to first position, second position, D sharp, E. Then the second half of the piece, G. I re-strike that, so I slide and re-strike the top note. It's all first string. Second string, second string, first string. And then, so that part there from the D, B, A, G, F sharp, open E. Let me do that second half again. So it goes back to the beginning, but that's that's the melody. So get very familiar with that melody before you even attempt to play the piece. If you can't play that melody really confidently and know where those notes are, it's gonna you're gonna have a very hard time playing the piece. Especially these kind of like finicky sections at the beginning. This thing. You want to make sure that you know that section. Um, if you don't, oh, you'll just it'll be so much more difficult. So. Very familiar with the melody. Now, in the actual piece, there's this tricky part, and it gives lots of students trouble. But let's make sure we go over it very calmly, and you give it lots of prep time. So as you're playing the melody on its own, you'll be prepping the piece in that way. You can also practice the three ways to play this tricky part. The part in the piece I'm talking about is the... That's the part we're going to study. And a good thing to remember is that no matter how much you're buzzing or like your accompaniment buzzes or you, you know you make little mistakes, the melody is the most important thing. That's all the audience wants to hear. So make sure the audience hears a beautiful melody. And then if you're muted elsewhere, you know, like, it doesn't matter how muted you are, if the melody's coming out, the audience has something beautiful to listen to. So just keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that this section, it only lasts for about a second and a half. It seems so hard to overcome for students, but it's such a small part. So the first thing I'd recommend is playing just the melody and the bass notes. Those are, you know, the melody is the most important, the bass is the next, and then accompaniment is the least important. So... You want to play those melody notes, and I have it all notated, but... So you can keep that bar right down if you like, and get those notes. If you can't play the bass and the melody on its own, it's going to be hard to get that accompaniment in. That C, sh that C sharp. Open E, F sharp, A, and then just move down one fret. And it's just a bar two there. When I teach students, I'll often just have them like do this first. And then just one thing at a time. Stop. 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 Prepare as long as you need. Stop. Down one fret. Stop. You know, just break it into technique chunks and make sure that the student, I make sure that my student can play those individual technique chunks and then all they have to do is put it together right so very calmly doing that the next so that's the first way of practicing it i mean there's the melody on its own and then bass and melody notes and now chord shapes so now we're going to play the entire chord shapes and i have diagrams for this and notation 
Sounds a little funny when it's out of context. But of course you want to be able to play the chord shapes. Then your left hand will know the shapes that it has to be in. Polishing all this stuff is, is a little bit difficult, but just knowing it really well is actually the, the most important thing, right? Oh, sorry, chord shapes. All together. And then now we'll play it as it's written, but I'll just give you a few tips as we go through it. So you're the previous bar. There's an open string here. During the open string, do your shift, right? So utilize the sound of that open string because it's a long way to go from here all the way up to here. Open. And you can do a little bit of a writ too, or a relaxation of the phrase. Now my other tip is get these two notes before you get your bar A. Get those two, because those are the first notes that appear, and then get your bar A for that E. So you can watch my hand when I do that. Same thing there. Open E, do your shift. And during that open E, you create the bar A in mid air, just like we practiced in the a studio that we did last. So again, one more time, you do a little writ, let the B, open B sustain, shift, get the first two notes, then the bar A. Keep your third finger down, just slide it up the fourth string. Down one fret. And then it, it ends. So that's how you'll accomplish that section. If you give that enough time, I know you'll have this urge to play the whole piece, to like dive into the whole piece, but just play the melody on its own, practice that page of preparation for that upper section, and I think if you do that, you'll be just fine and ready to play the piece. If you can already do all those things, when you go to play the piece, it's pretty much going to play itself to some extent. One thing I'll say before we go through a walk through the piece is make sure at the ends of the phrases you don't pound out the final notes. Um, so for example, I find that students get kind of tense in this piece because of all the barres and stuff like that, that they get to the end and they're so happy that they got there that they pound out some of those bass notes, but really, pieces over there and then you just sneak that bass note in very softly underneath the melody note. Same thing at the very end of the piece. Just sneak that bass note in so that you have a tapered phrase based on the melody. You're not just throwing things out because you have like um, a tension in the hand or that you feel really like you want to like pound that note out because you got there. Um, just make sure that you're tapering it very nicely and following the phrasing that you did in the melody. So let's just do a quick walkthrough. Bring out the melody, of course. Make sure the accompaniment, this note here, is very soft. You know, those nice lifts and then decays near when you arch to the top of the phrase and then at the end of the phrase you taper out. Covered this enough. And then you would repeat. Second half. So there, do the slide, I restrike the top. And then do a pull off, right? This piece is so great because there's all these open strings for your shift to bar is. Now here, 
try to remember that the E here is the melody. So that's E for three beats. This accompaniment is, is nice and it's very pretty, but it's kind of accompanimental. It's that top E that's important. So you're just very soft with I am. And then this part. That's kind of like a technique exercise, right? All those like Odair drills and, and technique things like that um, prepare you for this. But stay focused on that upper note melody line. major chord, open, and then you get the same melody in minor, and then a little line here. And then you repeat the second half, and then you go back, it's DCL fine, so back to the beginning of the piece, and you play that first section one more time with no repeat. So the, a sec the top half of the piece, you play twice, bottom half of the piece you play twice, and then you play the top half one last time with no repeat. I think that's about it in terms of like advice for the piece. My The main thing I want to say though is just make sure that you prep the piece. If you try to dive into this one, you're probably going to find some of the sections quite difficult. But if you prepare for it by playing that melody on its own, you'll have so much orientation and so much musical input already that the little tiny difficult technical difficulties that only last for one second will not give you much trouble because you'll be nicely focused on that melody. So keep your priorities straight and um, I hope you enjoyed the grade four book. Um, there'll be a grade five book eventually as well um, along with some um, fretboard knowledge uh, books as well.